Duke Solomon, and I've been working with Dr. Gregory Gasnitsky on the very context of music of Walter Hartley and his biography and performer's guide to the concertos for the baritone saxophone. Um, the research of music is actually really diverse and unique because it's much more um, a derivative of performers of the researchers' own personal analysis and actual research that's conventionally known, which that's really it makes it a complex idea for a program such as this because it's not, you're not going and looking at a specific history or a molecule. You're actually looking at a piece of music and deciding how someone else should play it in the future and why it should even exist right now. Why is it relevant? Much as if you look in the canon of literature from the past, why is To Kill a Mockingbird studied today? That's what we have to do in from a music performance standpoint for music research. So that's, that's the focal point of what my research project uh, was based on. And the development of this project was uh, crafted because these many of the works for baritone saxophone aren't known. Um, the saxophone was developed late in history for, from an instrument perspective in 1842 um, Adolf Sachs presented his first saxophone, which was the bass saxophone, in Brussels, Germany, and people actually destroyed it. So he went back, made a new one, and came back in 1846, and that's when he got the patent. By this time, orchestras were already set. They had instrumentation. Ensembles were already all across Europe. So it kind of missed its introduction point into the musical field, especially within classical music. So, the same, the, for the problem, um, the concertos for the baritone saxophone aren't recognized and they are never performed. The baritone saxophone concertos merit a greater recognition than this because they're actually very good pieces, just nobody knows about them because they don't fall within that canon. The performance knowledge and of study of this repertoire is just non-existent. Nobody's done any. Um, not one research study is published for any of the works I found. And this this is important because new repertoire is pertinent to the development of the classical saxophone, especially with its such late introduction. Because even today, music scholars and non-music scholars, when you hear saxophone, you don't think of classical music. There's such a big jazz focus, or even in pop, um, like in ska music, but nobody thinks of saxophone as a classical instrument. And which is interesting, because when you look at literature, or just the trend in history, the saxophone was developed for a spot in the symphony orchestra. But that never took. There are only works w with saxophone in general in French repertoire, and even in modern pieces, the saxophone hasn't been added to the new symphony. This changed, however, with the introduction of military bands. The saxophone was very popular because it was loud. People could hear it from miles away when you had bands marching, especially in France and in Germany marching bands. Uh, 150 Years of Music for the Saxophone by Jean-Marie Landex um, illustrates 12,000 works for saxophone, which that's really significant. However, those 12,000 works are predominantly for the alto saxophone, which has been studied. People know it. Which, for the baritone saxophone, it's still one of the standard instruments. It's in every modern ensemble. So it was curious to me why there's no study of it, why people don't encourage it more, why the repertoire that's being composed isn't added when they still want you to perform it. They just don't want you to study it. So it's even with recommended repertoire lists from every university in America and in, in Europe they have maybe two pieces for baritone saxophone that you should look at, and about 30 to 60 pieces for alto or tenor saxophone. <coughs> Which, it's really interesting because the baritone saxophone was created before those two. So
So it has an older history, but it has less repertoire. So that's, that's a big problem. It is a disconnect from what you are told in study of performance, but then they don't have anything for, to study, and there's no previous literature. From my research, I found that there are 14 concertos known, but zero pieces are within the standard repertoire of what you learn in school. That's from undergraduate through a PhD. No standard rep. None are on the list of you have to perform this piece or you won't get to your degree. Um, the style of these works are a mix between jazz or classical, or there's a third stream which is both. The purpose of this project um, is to examine and analyze the concertos for the saxophone written by Walter Hartley from a historical, theoretical, pedagogical, and performance perspective.
studied, he started composing at five years old, which that's saying something, especially in the modern music days, because he didn't have the Beethoven. He wasn't starting with the standard classical music. Um, he got his degrees, his bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD from the Eastman School of Music of the University of Rochester. And currently, he is the professor emeritus of music at Fredona State University in Fredona, New York. He has worked for saxophone from 1951 through 2005. The concerto itself was composed in 1988. It is a three-movement work, lasting nine minutes and 30 seconds, and is published by Dorn Publication. And in general, this is a very academic work. It's not so much as if you don't understand musical concepts, you'll find it interesting, but you won't, per se, call it pretty music. It's very mathematical, almost. Um, the work utilizes a full range of the instrument, from low A to altissimo C, which is a span of almost four octaves, which on any instrument, that's significant, but on saxophone, when standard range is two and a half octaves, when you go a full octave more than that, that's really saying something as a performer, and that boosts the level of the work. The harmonic structure is atonal. It's classical music, but it's more modern. So you won't find any scales like C major, you won't hear any um, major chords. None of, no, nothing you hear in this work is a pretty. It's very not standard to what you would hear in classical music. Now, orchestration, the solos is prepared easily, which is great for the baritone saxophone because it's not a very loud instrument when you play it in classical music. It has a very dark tone, and to serve that, the orchestration being light really emphasizes its beauty as an instrument. So in movement one, Hartley uses serial principles. And in, in this, it's a four note pattern, which are called cells. And this is a modified structure from 12 tone music where in a 12 tone work, you have to use each of 12 pitches before you can repeat any new system of 12 notes. But in this, he breaks that and he uses four note intervals that have transpositional equivalents and inversional equivalents. And I'll explain what that means in just a second. So in this excerpt from the opening, <coughs> each one of these five sets of four are essentially the same exact musical expression. Each cell would technically be considered the same thing in this work. Even though they're on different notes and they will sound differently, it's the same exact musical expression. So when you play through the work, you have to take that into account so when you're going up, you're playing the same four note cell and that creates a new line instead of looking at this because there's no tonal center. You have to consider what cell you're in rather than what key you're in. And below, in the blue, those are inversional um, techniques. So that means you can have two different sets, and they can be played backwards and still represent the same character. Movement two is a ternary form. It's very standard for classical music. It's just ABA, so you have one section, a contracting section and then you go back to the beginning. That's very a standard form from back to ancient Greek music. But the orchestration, it's interesting because the octet plays all open fifths, which that's also a very standard classical progression. However, the soloist who's playing the lyrical melody is playing half steps and quarter steps away from those notes, so it still you don't have any tonal center. So you'll hear a very classical background with a very dissonant melody over it, and it creates an interesting effect. 
So in this, this is an excerpt from the first page of the second movement. There is no tonal center, and while the soloist plays through this, the orchestra is just playing whole notes in open fist. So the entire work is based upon the soloist, and that also creates an interesting idea for a concerto, because concertos don't often work that way. In a concerto, the orchestra often plays side by side with the soloist, and they emphasize each other. In this, it's all about the soloist, so you have to take that into account as a performer, because it's all about what you do over the open fifth progression. In movement three, the structure is a modified ternary form, which is ABA again, but the A section is movement one. The B section is movement two, and when it goes back to A, it combines movement one and two, so you get musical ideas with the four note cells throughout one, the first A section and the second A section, and then you get the open structure in the B section, and it brings the whole work back together. For performance practice, there are no common scales used so you have to take into account the cells, because in the study of music, you base your technique off of method books. So that scales and etudes and arpeggios, this piece doesn't utilize those, so you have a completely new technical structure to learn. So you have to take each of the four cells separately and take that and do that full range across the instrument in every octave. And that's how you build that technique for future use. Luckily, Walter Hartley uses very specific phrase markings, and he gives you plenty of areas to breathe. So that's already laid out for you. However, he uses altissimo outside of the standard register. That's even hard for university level performers or professional performers who already have gone through training. So it's important to work on these separately outside of the piece, especially for the baritone saxophone, for no worse really utilize these techniques. Conclusions. The concerto was developed in time of serialism, which is 12-tone music, but he takes that further and develops his own sort of character with his four note cells, breaking that pattern so he can repeat different characters every four notes instead of every 12 notes. While Hartley's other compositions also utilize 12 tone idea, his chamber concerto is unique and it's composed in a way that showcases the academic side while also showcasing the, what the performer can do on that instrument. The work is a three movement concerto with three separate structures for each movement. So that really boosts its technical ability for what it can give to the performer study. While other concertos for the baritone saxophone exist, not all of them work. A lot of them are over orchestrated, and many don't have piano reductions, and not often will a student performer be able to perform with an orchestra. So that you have to take that into account as well when you're deciding what pieces to study and why you should study a work. So the con chamber concerto for baritone saxophone and wind octave by Walter Hartley um, should be studied from a performance standpoint because it utilizes everything that standard repertoire concertos use. So that makes it the perfect piece to add to standard rep 